Okay, so we are now on our almost end of the unit. And we're going to be doing surface area and volume of spheres. Okay, now a sphere is just a glorified no, ball, yes. Okay. So, right, you got your I don't know how I just did. What the heck just happened there? Okay. So we're basically dealing with a three dimensional sphere, right? That has uh, that's almost kind of like the equator. So if you went all the way around, and if you went right from the middle to the outside, that's where you have your R. Now if you want to find out the surface area, you would use 4 pi, pi r squared. And if you want to do the volume, you will do 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay? Is that bugging you? No. Uh, 2 for surface area, because it's squared. Right? Four, four, four thirds pi r cubed. Four pi r squared. Four pi r squared. Okay, so we're just going to do a nice easy one here. Find the surface area and volume. Okay, and we're going to be really deliberate about how we do them in our three steps. Now, to give me the diameter is eight. None of these formulas use diameter. They use radius. So R equals 4 meters. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put surface area equals 4 pi R squared. That's for the first mark, or first part of the mark. Okay. Next, surface area equals 4 pi. And then you could put your R inside the brackets there, which is 4 meters. And I know you guys can put this one into your calculator quite easy. So I'm just going to give you the answer for that. That would be 201.06, what do you think the units would be? Meters squared. Okay. Now, Let's do volume. So we're going to put V equals. And we're going to write down the formula. 4 thirds pi R cubed. Substitution. V equals 4 thirds pi times 4 meters cubed. Now, Students struggle, actually, how to put this one to their calculator. So I'll show you the quickest way. You can just watch this. Because when you have that fraction in the front, some people are, like, freaking out what to do. Where's my fraction button? Okay. So what you do, this is how I do it. It's easiest. I actually take this and put it in brackets. Four thirds. Now, where do you get that slash? That is your division sign. Because that's really what that slash means, division. So I put four thirds, and then I multiply by pi. Now, do you see I didn't even put a time sign there? You don't have to put a time sign with pi. If you put nothing, it means times. Okay? But if you put a time sign, you're still going to get it right. Okay? And then times 4. And how do you do cubed? Do you, do you see right here? No, it's this guy right here. Looks like the roof of your house. So that one, and then your 3. 4 thirds pi r cubed. 
Okay. And then, there it is. Okay, so that's what I would put in. So my answer to the nearest hundredth would be volume equals 268.08 meters cubed. Okay, yeah, because we'll get into that. Okay, we good? Now, what we're gonna what we're going to do now as a class is we're gonna start making formulas. And I wanna know first which formula on here, that blue study sheet, which formula on here that you would use to derive. Okay? So you have access to all of these. One of these will get you through every single problem. See, what I want to take, I want to take you guys to the next level, right? You guys are the AP class. My job is actually to make your life easier when you get to physics and chem and stuff like that. And you know how I, I said if you take AP, you're going to get the same or better mark than you would in the regular classroom is because I'm going to teach you stuff in here that you will eventually have to learn anyway. But when you learn it the second time, it is going to be so easy, and you wait, because you'll be with people that are not doing this stuff, and it's frustrating. Okay? Because it's your second time through. It's their first. So, And all that stuff that we do extra isn't actually counted as your mark, so you just get that extra bonus, right? Now, let's look at this next question. We're going to start making our own formulas. If the area of a square is 50 meters squared, what is the length of one side of the room to the nearest centimeter? Okay? Now, somebody give me the formula. Or maybe I'm just going to ask somebody. That's even more fun. Which formula is this about? Okay? I don't want the derived one. We'll do that together. Tell me the formula, the go-to formula you would pick on this one. Uh, Noel. What's the go-to formula for this one? You can look on your formula sheet because it's on there, right? Mm, it's a square room. It's actually quite important for this one. No. That's surface area of a cube. This isn't a cube. See, even knowing the right formula, turn the other page. I'll tell you, it's not on that page. No. Oh. Okay. Jessica, which formula did you use? The square. What? Area equals x squared. So I just want everybody to write this down. Now, this will not get you the formula part on your FSA for this one, because this is not the formula to find the one side. I need to derive it. What am I looking for in this formula? What am I looking for? X. Somebody tell me how to get this so it's just X equals. Yes. No. I don't, I don't care about 50 right now. I'm just working with the formula. So do you see that the square root of A equals x. Okay? Okay? That is your formula. So for the first f, x equals the square root of a. Now, doesn't that look like a 
weird formula. And it is something that you just derived, okay? You didn't have to memorize that formula, but you, you made it using your knowledge of deriving formulas. So now, after I've done that, like this is a skill that uh, you will use all the way through the rest of high school, and you will use it all through university. promise you. And it makes your life so much easier if you learn how to do it properly. Okay? So now I will do my substitution. Oops. X equals the square root of 50 meters squared. Now everyone knows how to put this in their calculator, right? So I want you to put it in, and I'm just going to ask somebody for the answer. And look at the question before you give me the answer. Please don't yell it out or give it to anybody. What's wrong? No, I'll ask somebody randomly. I want everybody to participate in this little endeavor. Make sure they're using their calculator right. And look at the question for what to round. Okay, um, Haley, what'd you get? To the nearest c centimeter? Well, first of all, give it to me to the nearest meter. Yeah. You should get 7.07 .07 meters, correct? Now that's what we get right out, and then look, nearest centimeter. Remember this, right? Kill him dead, but don't commit murder. You should always be writing this down. We are here. We are going here. So we are going to move our decimal to... So your final answer would be x equals 707 centimeters. Okay. So for all the rest of these, we're making up our own formula before we go on. Okay, the circular trim, or the trim on a circular table is 3.5 centimeters in length. What is the diameter of the tablecloth to the nearest millimeter? Okay, now when they're changing units on you, don't get into it yet. Wait till you get your answer in centimeters, then go convert. Just like we did in the last one, I got the answer in meters. Don't try and do it before, okay? It'll just make mistakes. Now, we are dealing with a circular tablecloth, right? And we have trim that goes around. Now, trim is a synonym for what when it comes to circles? Yes. Circumference. Do we have a circumference formula? So, C equals pi D. Now, again, do you have to memorize that? No. It is on this sheet. Everything that you will do will be on this sheet. But this doesn't give you the formula for diameter. So, Mathematically, how do I get D by itself? Mathematically, how do I get D? Matthew. Divide by pi, divide by pi. This is gone. So we know that D equals C over pi. Now, some of you probably memorized that in the past. Okay? But now you can see how you should just be able to derive it. So our first step would be that. Our second step would be to get the right number with the units, you see that, over pi. Okay, everybody, you know how to put this one in? Use your pi button. Okay, and you'll get your answer in centimeters. You should be getting, and you want to go to a few 
decimal places, right? Because 1.114 centimeters. And that's not my final answer. He wanted it in millimeters, so I do this, kill him dead, but don't commit murder. I am here, and I'm going to here. So I'm going to go over one. And it said to the nearest millimeter. So the nearest millimeter would be 11 millimeters. Hmm? I don't know. Yeah. Guys, Matthews. Okay. Remember, grade 10. Just going to put that in the back there. We got a volume of spheres, 2,500 centimeters cubed. What is the radius to two decimal places? Okay. So, the formula that we would use, so don't tell me, I want to see who everybody should know this. I should be looking through. Uh, Olivia, what would you pick? Which formula to start off with? Okay, now, what you always want to do, and we kind of never did this with the other ones because they were so maybe simple, but you want to kind of circle what you want by itself. Okay, I wanted X by itself there. This one, I want R by itself. Okay, it's very crowded there. R, it's got to be R equals. Now, I'm going to teach you something new here. Whenever you have a fraction, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. That's how you get rid of the fraction. So, the reciprocal of 4 thirds is 3 over 4. Now, do you see when you multiply by 3 over 4, the 3's cancel, the 4's cancel, it's gone. But just make sure you're doing it to both sides. Okay? If you multiply by 3 over 4 on the one side, do it to the other. Now, it's nice that I can just get rid of this. And you can see it's starting to clean up a bit. What else can I do to clean up? Should I take the cube root? Not now. Not till you never take the cube root, square root, or whatever till it's just the that variable cubed. Okay? So what will we do next? Yes? Divide by pi. Do you see how it's going to get rid of it there? So do it to the other side. Gone. Now I have, and it looks a lot neither in mine. I just have an R cubed. Now the opposite of R cubed is the cube root of R. Okay? So here is the formula for the radius of a... Okay, so let's just write that out. R equals the cube root of 3V over four pi. Now, I get it. We went slow on this, so it took us about a minute. And you're like, oh, if I memorized it, it'd be like 10 seconds. Okay? But in the end, ours takes a lot less work, and we're going to get it right. If you memorize, you have no idea if you messed it up or not when you put it down. I've had students that memorized the formula wrong and did a whole test on it. Okay? Now, the beauty of that is that is the R formula. If you knew that ahead of time, that's just weird. Okay? But you can look at your formula sheet, get the main formula, derive it using the steps that we've learned. And just make sure you're always doing cube roots, square roots, all last when it's just R by itself. Yes? Ah, well, we'll get there. Okay, you're ahead of me. Now, first of all, let's do our substitution. So when we're putting stuff into our calculator, uh, we have something to put in. So R equals the cube root of 3 times 2,500 centimeters cubed. That was awesome, eh? That's how I get optimal learning. If you fall asleep, you would die. And you'd never wake up again. Okay. 
be afraid, be very afraid. Now, someone in the last class asked me this, and I'm so glad they did. Do you cube the 2500? No. Okay. Because it's centimeters cube, but that is a common error. So I want you to write this down. That 20, that uh, maybe I'd want to put it to 2,500 centimeters cubed does not equal 2,500 centimeters cubed. Okay, and the right one, I actually would cube the 2,500. Do you see how it's outside the brackets? In centimeters cubed, that's just the units. Okay? Now, this is how you put this into your calculator. I actually want you to watch first, and then I will give you time to do it. Okay? If you don't watch and you're trying to do it, then you screw it up, then you're going to be like, eh, well, I didn't see anything. Okay? So I know you're going to want to pick up your calculators. Just watch. Okay? So, the first thing you want to do is a cube root. Now, if you go to math, don't go there. Right here, there is a cube root. This is also a cube root if you put a 3 in front of it. This would be a 4th root, a 5th root, a 6th root if you put 6 in it. So I actually use this one more than anything. So in your regular screen, don't do it, just watch. I'll put 3 and I'll hit the math button. And you can go down or just hit 5, doesn't matter. That's how you can do cube root on your calculator. Or the fourth root, or the fifth. You could put a five there if you need to do the fifth root. Now, I want to do, um, it's not shown here, but this is really what's going on. Okay? I need all of that cube rooted. And this long line does that here. What's going to do that in my calculator? This bracket here. Then, I need to start a set of brackets for just the top because my calculator needs to do the top divided by the bottom. So I will start a new bracket and I'll go 3 times 2,500 and I will close the top. Then I will divide by and I will keep the bottom together for pi and close that and then I will close the entire thing to say I want that all cube rooted. Question? No. Right here. That is just the units. That does not mean this. See? I knew somebody would ask. I was just ahead of you. Okay? Now, does everybody see this set, this bracket, and this bracket? They're the start and finish. These two brackets for the top, and this for the bottom. Yeah, you have to add that. Okay? And then you hit enter, and you get that. Okay, now you try it. See if you can get it. Yep. No, you can do this without a graphing. Okay, so what's the answer to two decimal places? Yeah, R equals 8.42. And yes, centimeters, it's someone said nice and loud. It's really showing you know your units because when I'm looking for just the radius, it will be in centimeters. Okay? Okay, guys. Let's get other people off track here. So, The volume of a Rubik's Cube is 720 centimeters cubed. What is the length of one side? So I am more curious to see if we can come up with the formula because if you know the formula, the rest is easy. Okay? Rubik's Cube. Okay, so we've got that. Can, can someone please tell me, putting up your hand, which formula you would use? Yes. 
Okay, what am I looking for? X. So how do I get X by itself? Cube root. Good. So you cube root, cube root, and then you would get the cube root of V equals X. Now I always like what I'm looking for on the left. So when I start this, my formula will be X equals the cube root of V. Okay, I always like my unknown on the left. I used, in algebra, it was going to be left on the right, but I can turn both sides, okay? 5 equals V is the same thing as V equals 5. Now, it's just a matter of 720, okay? And that is a quick X equals 8.96. Oh, 720 centimeters cubed. Oh, that was bad. Okay. Did you use the cube root or the square root? No. Oh, you put 750. Yes. You need to write down somewhere on the top of your study sheet. If I put the wrong number into my calculator, I will get the wrong answer. Exclamation mark. Huh? You needed a graphing calculator two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Now this one here we're not going to go through because we've already done it, but what is the catch on this one? Because it gives you, it wants you know, the approximate volume of the moon. What do I need to find volume of the moon? I need my radius. But they give me a diameter, so what would I do? So I divide by 2, and I will get 1080. And then I would put that in 4 thirds pi r cubed, right? Everyone would know how to do that one, right? That was not even, that's an insult to your intelligence. Let's go, let's do this one. Okay? We've got a hemisphere has a radius of 5 centimeters cubed. What's the surface area of a hemisphere? A hemisphere is half a sphere. Okay, hemi means half. Uh, a hemispherical head, if you've ever heard about that in the, you know, the Dodge Hemi. Okay, that's where this came from. Because it actually, um, most pistons, this is the bottom, and then here's like the explosion, right? What uh, Chrysler did is they actually put their head like this so it actually uh, this goes up and down in a chamber more fuel can fit in that one therefore bigger explosion therefore more power so when you hear about the hemispherical head or the hemi the dodge hemi you ever heard of that okay that's their big famous engine because they came up with that in the 70s and were the you know trying to be the big muscle car now the surface area of a hemisphere now, when you take half a sphere and you cut it, you actually add, like, I'm just going to talk about, like, let's pretend, like, we've got a nice round watermelon or melon, and you cut it in half. You've got your surface area around, but now you also have a new surface area inside. So... You have the surface area of the outside, which I just drew, and you also have the surface area of the bottom here. Okay? Now, if I just want to kind of show you how this came to be. What was the surface area formula for the sphere? Okay, well, that's what you would think, right? So, so this part here is 4 pi r squared divided by 2 because all the outside was 4 pi r squared. So half of it would be, so this works out to be 2 pi r squared. Now that's not the surface area of a hemisphere though because we also have to add this new part. What is that? What shape is that? 
what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Now, that's 1 pi r squared, right? If I had 1 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared, it would be? So this is the surface area of a sphere is 3 pi r squared. And that's on your formula sheet. Hemisphere doesn't have a picture, but it says hemisphere, your surface area is 3 pi r squared. And it wants to know the surface area to, th to uh, if it was 5 centimeters, that would be 3 pi times 5 centimeters squared. And I know you guys would have no problems putting that into your calculator, so I'll just give you the answer. 235.6 centimeters squared. Now the volume. If you take a, a sphere and you cut it in half, will you half the volume? Yes, you will. That is why that formula comes right from the volume. So volume is 2 thirds pi r cubed. Now, if you half that, that means you multiply it by half. So, when we multiply it by half, we'll multiply those two fractions together. Remember that when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators. So, this would be 2 over 6. So, volume equals 2 6 pi r cubed. Well, no, it's supposed to be 4 thirds pi r cubed, sorry. 4 thirds, which gives me 4 six. There we go. Right. So, 4 six reduces to, so this is the formula, 2 thirds pi r cubed. Now, it's just a matter of, and remember, when you put it in your calculator, it would look like this. Oops. Now, you're not going to put the centimeters into yours, but. And then you will get 261.8 centimeters cubed. Now, the last question is a really good question. I don't want you to ever get caught on something like this. Because 8 is a very good test question to see, do, it's still up there, Matthew. Do, uh, hmm? yeah, well, see, that's what we want to try, try out, okay? Now, this is what, I didn't do this with the last class, but I want to try it with you guys is pick a sphere and and just say right now the radius equals you could try four the bigger number the harder you are on yourself all right because then you got bigger math but even if you just made it one centimeter so let's find out what the volume would be if the radius of our sphere so we have v equals four thirds pi r cubed So V would equal 4 thirds times pi times 1 cubed. So what would be the volume of that sphere? Yep. Give me a couple more decimal for you. 4.1887? Okay, so that would have been 4.2 if you were rounding there. Okay, centimeters cubed, right? Everybody get what I did? I just picked one. Now, if I want to see what happens if it's doubled, what should my new radius be? 
Okay, oh, I, I didn't substitute right here. I should have put a centimeter. Okay, so volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. Volume equals four-thirds pi times two centimeters cubed. What is the volume equal? And I just, I'm just making up this randomly, so I haven't done the math. What do you get when you put in your calculator? Okay, what are you getting? How much? I want it to four decimal places. Okay, so how much how many times larger is it? How do you how do you know? A lot's gonna get you no marks, okay? So you take 33.5103 and divide by 4.1887 and you get 8. So the volume would be eight times as large. Okay, so I showed you using numbers. I'm going to show you how I uh, showed the other class this. So, we're going to talk about VO, stands for V0, or V original. The original ball was 4 thirds pi r cubed, right? That was the original. Now, let's try with the new, the new ball is going to be, if it's r in the one ball, what would it be in the other one? 2R. V stands for volume. V not the original. V. Okay? So, 2R would be for the new ball, right? So, let's try that. V not equals 4 thirds pi times 2R. No, let's do V new. The new ball is 4 thirds pi times 2r cubed. Okay? So does everybody see this is the original? This is the new. See? Totally doing without numbers. Working on a theoretical. This is where you guys are going to be in uh, when you're in calculus. Right? Not working with numbers. Because I'm not putting in anything for r. I'm trying to do it without, so this should work for every case. doesn't matter what R is. I'm showing you it works for every R. Now, I'm actually going to, that's pi times 8 R cubed. How did I get that? Well, you cube the 2. That's how you get the 8. You cube the R. That's how you get the R cubed. Now, you know that A, B, C times D is the same thing as A, C, B, D, right? If you multiply them all together, right? Well, can I move this 8? Because these are all multiplied together. I'm going to move the 8 in the front just to make this 8 times 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, that's V nu. No, it's still on the bottom. I left it on the bottom. That's 8 over 1. Okay? Now, does everybody see what is 4 thirds pi r cubed? What is it? 4 thirds pi r cubed is v naught, the original. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute. So v nu equals 8 times. Since V original equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, 4 thirds pi r cubed equals V original. So it shows you that V nu is 8 times V original. That's how you do it totally theoretical. Okay? So it's going to be 
it is going to be a journey to get you so this becomes so normal, but that's why you're starting in grade 10. Okay? Do you know that uh, some schools, when they start out their AP program, they start out in grade 12. So the grade 12s just get hit with all this stuff. Whereas we're spreading it out. No, the actual AP course is grade 12. No, what we're doing is, if you just did AP in grade 12, it is hard. There's so much. Not hard, a lot. I should say that. It's just too much jammed in that year, and it's just overwhelming. So what I'm doing is I'm taking stuff from grade 11, bring it down to grade 10, stuff from grade 12, bring it to grade 11, and then that last year is just a normal year. Okay? When you're in grade 12, it's just going to be a normal year. So you kind of suck it up a little bit instead of hard at the one time. Okay? And I know lots of schools have done it that way, and it's been extremely successful. And if I'm building a program, I'm going to go and see where it's working well, and I'm going to do everything they're doing. Okay? Whenever you want to do something well, find someone that's doing it as an exemplar and learn from them. And they're going to say, don't do this. Make sure you do this. Use this textbook. Use this. Use this. And you just get to take it all in and then make it a smooth transition, right? So that's what we're doing. Okay. Let's go. You only have 10 questions. But remember, don't waste time. Get right at it. You're in your textbook. You have 25 minutes to do 10 questions. That's 15 minutes too much. I'm worried what you guys are going to do with that extra time. <laughs>